Hi, everybody. This is part one of a series of videos designed to get you up and running with productions and to do a deep dive into some of the special features that are inside of Premiere Pro Productions, particularly for collaboration, um, as well as just organization for long form work. So in this introductory video, we're just gonna give you a quick overview of what productions are, some use cases where you might wanna use them, and definitely be sure and like and subscribe to make sure to see the rest of this series of videos as we dive into each individual part of what make up productions. To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and jump over into Adobe Premiere, and I'm just gonna go full screen here and just show you guys a couple of quick pictures that'll help to explain what productions are um, so that you'll have kind of a good baseline as we move forward and we dive deeper into all the individual bits and pieces. To get started, um, the Premiere Pro project file really hasn't changed much in the 25 plus years of Adobe Premiere. Uh, the project file is something that contains sequences and clips. You guys have all used it. Um, anytime you create a new project inside of Premiere, you create this file that lives on a drive someplace, either on shared storage um, or on a local drive on your machine. Now, a project file has always been geared around the idea of one editor opening it, making changes, saving those changes, and closing it again. So when it comes to collaborative workflows, a project really isn't enough to enable this ability to collaborate. We don't want to get in a situation where anybody can overwrite each other's work, and that's one of the challenges when you're working with a single project file. Another challenge of a project file is as you begin to add more clips to it, as you begin to add more sequences to it, that project file begins to grow in size. Now that's fine if you're doing short form work or if you are doing some sort of episodic show um, or even for maybe short films and things along those lines. But when you start to add, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of clips, if you're working on a documentary where you've got five years worth of archival footage, a single project file is going to break down. It's going to start to take longer and longer to open it. It takes longer and longer to save. And particularly if you like to auto save the way I do, you know, that is a disruption to the workflow. So productions are designed to handle this by creating a container that actually holds multiple Premiere Pro projects. And those projects can be dedicated to certain tasks. You might have some projects that have editing sequences. Other projects might have your clips organized. You might have a project dedicated to sound effects or music. And all of those are part of this entire whole that we call a Premiere Pro production. Now, when you're working inside of a production, what a production actually looks like is it is a folder on disk. It's something that you can actually browse to using your operating system. You will see subfolders and Premiere Pro projects within that production. You wanna make sure that Premiere manages this folder. Don't put any media in there. Your media can live concurrently in a separate folder next to the production folder. And that's also true of things like scratch disks, um, you want to make sure that those are all separate. They're in a separate uh, physical location. If you're going to have multiple editors working inside of the production, you want to make sure your production folder is on some sort of shared storage. We'll talk a bit more about that in a future video. Um, Treat this as a single unit. The idea is you open the production first, and then you dive into the bits and pieces that you're going to currently be working with. Um, so all the editors can open the production at the same time, but then they're going to open up different bits and pieces depending on what they happen to be working on. I might be editing reel one, somebody else might be editing reel two. Um, productions allow for this type of work. They're also very, very flexible in the organization. So what I mean by this is you can create the folder structure that best suits what you're trying to work on. I'm going to be showing a little bit in this video series a couple of different ideas for how to organize a production. But just think about the way you currently use a single project with different folders and subfolders. You can use a production in the exact same way and just make sure that at the end stage, if you look on this graphic on the screen here, you'll see I have a folder called scene one. In the production, there's actually a project file called scene one. And we'll talk more about that as we go through this. Some of the benefits of working with productions 
Um, first off, because you're dealing with a large amount of small project files, each of those project files typically opens very, very fast and saves very, very fast. So this helps in your overall workflow. Um, because these productions, uh, anything inside of a production actually has um, a relationship with other bits and pieces. So for example, if I have a folder that contains a bunch of projects, these projects actually have an awareness of the other projects. So if I have a sequence in one project, uh, the clips can actually live in a separate project. We'll talk more about that in just a second. The other big benefit of this is obviously collaboration. When you're inside of a production, you can see at a glance what the other editors are currently working on, um, and you have a sense as to you know where you should be while you're working. Um, in this on the screen right now here, you'll notice that. The cuts project is currently open with a green pencil. That indicates that uh, that's an area that I'm actively making changes to. I can see red lock icons for the projects that Todd and Marjorie are currently working on. I can still open these projects and use them as sources. I can mark in and out points. I just can't make any changes in that project like deleting clips or renaming clips, which makes it really, really easy to work together. Now, cross-project referencing, this is what I meant by kind of having this relationship and this understanding. This isn't just a folder of uh, a bunch of Premiere Pro projects. These projects are aware of each other. And what this allows for from an organizational standpoint is it lets me organize clips into one project and have my editing sequence actually live by itself in a completely different project. So in this way, multiple editors could take advantage of organized clips within one project, but they're each cutting in their own individual project. And we remember this information. So there's no duplicate clips that have to be generated in an old way of working where you would have like maybe multiple Premiere Pro project files. You copy a sequence from one to the other, you end up getting duplicates of all the clips on that sequence. That's not the case in a production. In this case, if I were to take these three clips, drag them and drop them onto this sequence, this project would be aware of the media project and it would remember the relationship that these clips live there. So if I reveal those clips in the project, they'll actually, uh, Premiere will actually open up the media project and it will highlight the clip that I've requested. So that relationship is something we call cross-project referencing, and it's part of the secret sauce of productions that makes it so valuable in a collaborative environment. Now, I definitely recommend checking out the rest of the videos. We're planning a bunch of different videos in this series, so be sure and uh, follow along with the uh, rest of the videos as we dive deeper into productions. Um, please also take a look for the best practices guide because there's an entire chapter in there of about 20 to 30 pages that covers a lot of what we're gonna be talking about inside of these videos. So if you need a reference guide, the Adobe best practices guide for film and television is something to look for online. We'll put up the URL on the screen. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you again.